Have you ever ridden on a tandem bike? Well, let's make one at least. Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Somm here, continuing on our vintage boardwalk quilt. We're getting really far along, very exciting. Today we get to work on a tandem bike. It is block 28. Have you ever ridden on a tandem? So I think I did as a, as a little kid with my sister, but very random. Um, but I have a funny story about a tandem bike. So I was doing a double century big event ride and um, I don't know, far into the ride when we were all exhausted and it was really hot. Um, I'm riding along and a tandem bicycle goes by me and there's only one rider on it. And I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> something's not right. And so I yell out to the guy, you're missing someone. <laughs> and he like stopped real suddenly and you saw him loop around and he had to go back to the last rest stop. He left his <laughs> his other person that, that was supposed to be on the back of the bike and just didn't even realize that she wasn't there. It was comical like we all laughed about that for the longest time it was it was pretty funny it's, and it, it gave us all this little jolt of of power again you know to have something funny happen so anyway back to this uh block so today block 28 and what we need for today this tandem bicycle and i just dropped <laughs> the batting hold on <laughs> sorry <laughs> um anyway so we're going to use this very pretty mint fabric with bicycles on it. Notice that the bikes are um, directional. So we want this to be 12 and a half by 10 and a half. Choose which way that you want your bikes. I have mine going this way, if that helps. Um, so 12 and a half by 10 and a half, as always, backed with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers. This one is a big embroidery block, so you want to make sure to use your basting stitch. I, I tend to um, not always use it, but you're going to want it on this one. And since it's embroidery instead of just applique, um, you'll have more of a chance of puckering. So make sure to use a fusible stabilizer on the back. Your batting will help. Um, we'll talk about the batting in a second. So 12 and a half by 10 and a half, pretty mint fabric with bicycles on it. I love it. And then for our pocket, we're going to make a pocket again today. And our uh, fabric is the pink stripes. Having a hard time opening it. <laughs> three by three. And we're going to fold it in half. Sorry, my throat. Uh, three and a half, or sorry, three by three and fold it in half. And thankfully, you don't have to worry about how you cut it because it's three by three, all, all the same size. So cut it uh, in the direction that you want your stripes to go. That's for the pocket. Everything else will be embroidery, so we're gonna need lots of thread colors. I didn't pull them all out today, but grab your whole little kit and be ready. And then for our batting, our final cut size of this project is 10 and a half by eight and a half. So I'm gonna have my batting be nine by 11. So nine by 11 batting. And um, for the quilting today, I've chosen Swirl 2. That's the really pretty one with daisies and hearts that I wanted to use on the original bike, but decided that not enough of the quilting was going to show. Actually, I wanted to use it on the car, the vintage car. Um, so now I'm going to use it for, for my tandem. You can use any quilting design that is 8 by 10, because again, our final cut size is 8.5 by 10.5. That means you want a quilting design that's a half inch shorter, smaller, so that you have your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So 8 by 10 on the quilting design. I'm using Swirl 2 in 8 by 10. And we are going to have to move our design down um, on this one. So we want the bike tires all the way down at the bottom. We'll have a lot of quilting up at the top. So that'll be really nice. And I'll go over how to do that specifically. I'm going to use my biggest hoop. It's nine and a half by 14. For those that only have a five by seven hoop as your largest hoop, you can still do this easily. There are two designs on the CD that have um, four or five by seven so that you'll be able to just do half of the tandem bike and half of the tandem bike and um, the two five by seven files. And then for the quilting, if you're using a five by seven hoop, that's easy too. You would do a four by six twice 
like four by six down at the bottom and four by six down at the bottom and then four by four up at the top and four by four up at the top so that it equals eight by ten. Got that? I hope that makes sense. Um, I think that's it. Like I said, we are going to have to move the design down. We'll go over that. Lots of um, threads needed. I'm using tearaway stabilizer. I might add an extra sheet underneath depending on the number of stitches. I didn't check that beforehand. Um, but usually if you just use your basting stitch, that helps a lot. So I think we're all ready. Let's make a bike. Oh, I see my bike shirt. Cute, huh? All right, let's make a tandem bicycle. And tell me if you've ever ridden on a tandem, I'm curious. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We're about 220 away from being an official YouTube channel. So that'll be pretty cool. So tell your friends, <laughs> subscribe to Kristen Create's YouTube channel. There's a link, by the way. <laughs> There's a link in the uh, description of this video or down at the bottom. Um, I think it's on this side, I don't remember. <laughs> There's a little button to subscribe. Hi everyone. So I wanted to give a little uh, tutorial on how to alter today's um, quilting design. We're going to work on the tandem bike and our final cut size of this project is eight and a half by ten and a half. So that means that we need our quilting design that's eight by ten. I've chosen swirl two in eight by ten. I'm going to use my largest hoop. But uh, for those of you that have a smaller hoop, uh, we're gonna go over some specifics. So starting with the largest hoop, because keep in mind that we need to move this design down. So I'm gonna just show you my screen here and I'm gonna be looking up just because my monitor is bigger um, than the little one that has the camera. So excuse that, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm using So What Pro, you can do this with any embroidery software. I'll also try and show um, how to do it on your machine um, with pictures, but for now, um, using embroidery software. And again, I'm using So What Pro. So up here, it says So What Pro at the top, go to File, Open. And we're gonna start by um, finding our quilting design. So my quilting design is in sewing. Stipple Files, Kimber Bell. All right, and then it's the Swirl 2. And like I said, in 8 by 10. All right, so it automatically thinks that we're going to use a 5 by 7 file. So we go up here to this little hoop and adjust the hoop size. And I'm going to put in my nine by 14. Actually, I'm gonna start with my eight by 12 just to give you some information on this. So um, if I were to put eight by 12, see how the box over here is outside of the hoop. That means that it's too large. And moving this out of the way. So you can see here, eight and a half by 10 and a half is the size um, and the reason we've talked about this before, the reason is this size, the three and four, which is the placement and tack down of the main fabric. That Those are the ones that make it eight and a half by 10 and a half. Whereas the quilting design, which is step five, is 7.83 by 9.83. So basically eight by 10. So that's, you can see, so an easy way, if you have an eight by 12 hoop, an easy way is to bring this into software and right click on, yeah, see it's telling me it's not gonna fit in this hoop. So we're just gonna say no for now. So what we would do is simply right click on step three and delete this thread, delete 
number three because it took away four. All right, so now it fits. Now we're at eight by 10. We're still right at the edge here. And actually, depending on your model, mine is a brother and um, the brother hoop that's eight by 12 is not actually eight by 12. It's a little bit smaller than that. So then you would have to reduce this a bit. I'm gonna move this down a little bit so you can see these buttons. All right, so to do that, you would just click on the item, which then it's got all three of the steps and go to this resize button up here and bring it down, say 95%. You could probably even, let's do like 96. All right, and then look, we're right within the parameter. So now we're at 7.68 by 9.60. So that's the easy way, very, very easy way to make this work for an eight by 12 hoop. So those of you, that um, have an eight by 12 hoop, take out steps three and four, that makes it too large because of the placement and the tack down of the main fabric. And you don't need that, it's a nice to have, but you're just gonna center it over your batting and tape it in place. That works just, just fine. You can do that easily if you have an eight by 12 hoop. So you also will have to reduce it a little bit and you can do that on your machine if you prefer, or you can do it in embroidery software. If you have found a way to take out steps three and four using just your embroidery machine, share, because I don't know how. Um, as I've mentioned before, I got my machine right before COVID hit. So I haven't taken any classes on it or anything. I figured out all kinds of stuff, but I haven't seen where I can take out certain steps of a design. So. Anyway, um, all you would have to do is take out steps three and four and then reduce it just a little bit. We did 4% and that made it fit just perfectly within the hoop. So that works great. Again, remember to do a file save as. So you could file save as and then just give it a different name. Um, you could say smaller or eight by 12 hoop or put your name on there, whatever, but you don't want to do a save because then you're changing the actual file and you might want that actual file at a later point. So I always do a save as. All right, so that one's done. Eight by 12 folks, you know how to do it. All right, now let's move on to, um, actually, we also still have to, well, we can do that with the, we need to bring in the the bike design and show you how to move it down. And we've done that once before, so you should be good, but just in case. So again, file open, swirl to eight by 10. And I'm gonna do the original one, cause like I said, I'm gonna use my largest hoop and then go up here to this hoop button and I'm gonna use my nine by 14. If I can find it oh, right here, nine by 14. All right, so mine will fit just fine in my hoop. If you go this up, if you go down here to this zoom button, you can zoom out so that you can see the whole thing. Just a quick tutorial for those using embroidery software. All right, so here we've got our swirl to all five steps. As always, uh, the placement of the batting, tack down of the batting, placement of the main fabric, tack down of the main fabric, and then our actual quilting design. So we're all good on the quilting. Now we need to merge in our bike. And I've shown you how to do this on your machine and to move it down, you can easily do that. But another option is using software, especially for those that have a, an, a hoop issue. All right, so then you would go to file, merge, and bring in the, um, the bike design. And we're working on the tandem bike today. So vintage boardwalk, embroidery files, Pez, vintage. All right, and it's called the tandem bike, six by 10 tandem bike. All right, so as you can see, it automatically brings it to the middle of the file and we want it down at the bottom. So, we're just, it's already clicked on, we can just move it down. And what I like to do is move it down to this, this um, basting stitch down at the very bottom. That works as a really good um, viewpoint to see where we want to move this. All right, so 
It used to be that you could just move your mouse to zoom in and out. I hate that it somehow it changed on so a pro, but anyway. All right. So after step five, because we know step five is our quilting after step five is that first placement stitch. And that's the one that we want right on that basting stitch. We're going to bypass it because we've already got it in our quilting, but it's a it's a good tool to be able to line up. So for those that are using the eight by 12, you could line it up first before you take out um, steps three and four, but don't forget that you also need to reduce it. So Um, what's step seven? Step seven is also a basting stitch and we don't need that either. So we'll bypass that as well. So you can just take them out. I'm going to leave them in just so that I remind you to bypass them. And when we start taking all the photos, I haven't stitched my bike yet. All right. So again, here's our placement stitch for the for those that are not quilting at first, they that's their placement of knowing where to put their fabric, but our fabric's already there. That's So we're just using it as a guide of where to move our design down. So you can see from this photo that all this quilting is up at the top and around the bicycle. It's really a great design for this. And um, it's a little bit through the spokes and all that. So this, this is great. So for those using a five by seven hoop, I mentioned in the um, tutorial that you're gonna use a four by six, a four by six, a four by four, and a four by four. And so that's easy to do. You have to do each one separately. And then you also have to use the bike um, in two separate files. And that's already set for you. It's on, on the Kimberbell um, CD. So, um, and we've gone over how to do that as far as merging and um, lining it up just right in the design. It's already in the design, so you'll be all set. Um, let me know if you have any questions, but this was just a real quick tutorial on how to make it work for an eight by 12 and how to move the design down for everybody because we all have to move this design down. Um, and I think we're all set.